Okay, so we're going to take notes on solving quadratics by various methods. So again, this is a review. I'm just going to go through this real quick. Uh, one method is by taking square roots of both sides. In order for that to happen, you have to have just a square on one side of the equal sign. So in this case, I can go ahead and take square root. Now remember, the rule is whenever you take square root, you always end up with two answers. One's a positive, one's a negative. So you get positive, negative, square root of 51. Now, we've got to break down 51 if possible. So we take 51, and we start listing its factors. So 3 times 17. Well, here's the problem. 3 and 17 are prime numbers. So you can't take the square root of those. So in this case, that is our final answer. So we have another example here. Now, in this particular case, I do not have the square by itself. So I've got to isolate it. So how do I do that? I add 10 to both sides. If I do that, I get 7n squared equals 343. Then I have to get rid of the 7 by dividing. So now I'm left with n squared equals, now if I divide that real quick, try to do this in my head, that would be 4, 6, so that's 49. Now, since I have a square by itself, nothing else with it, now I can take the square root of both sides. And again, whenever I take the square root, I have two cases, positive, negative. 49, I can take the square root of, and that is 7. So that's one method, solve by taking the square root. Another is by factoring. Well, in this particular case, it's already factored. So it's easy to solve. We always talk about uh, when it's with the x, it's not what you think. So here, x would equal negative 1. And here, x would equal 8. So that one's pretty easy. But sometimes we actually have to factor it. Now, here's a case where we need to factor. The problem is it's not all set equal to 0, so I've got to get my like terms together. So here I'm going to add 3b to both sides, and I'm going to add 1. Now, remember, it's not just about getting it equal to 0, but you also want to have it in standard form. Remember, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So if I do that here, combine my like terms, I'm going to have 2b squared plus 7b minus 49 equals 0. So now I come over here, and now I need to factor this one. Okay, So reviewing back to what we did yesterday, the whole bottoms up method, um, so we do our little circle here, and it's going to be a negative 98. So I need factors. Since it's negative, that means one's positive, one's negative, to give me 7. So if I do negative 98 over here and start listing my factors, I know they have to be relatively close together. So I start maybe going with something like 8. Well, 8 won't go into it, 9 won't go into it, 10 won't go into it, 11 won't go into it. Um, try something like 12. Um, 12 won't go into it. Okay, so you kind of get the point. You're trying to get values. Uh, in this particular case, it's going to be 14 and 7. So I have 7 and 14. That gives me 98. Uh, to get a positive, this is positive, that's negative. So right here, again, the whole bottoms up thing, I have negative 7b, positive 14b. That gives me, that 7b multiplied gives me the negative 98. And then I bring everything else down. Now I have my four terms, so then we group by twos. So again, reviewing what we did yesterday. So here I take out a b, that's 2b minus 7. Here I take out a positive, in this case, 7. And that'll be 2b minus 7. Again, these are the same. That's all good. So those are out, 2b minus 7. And then take what I had left, which is b plus 7. And then again, all this is equal to 0. So then I do my solutions. Here, if you have to, remember it's 2b minus 7 equals 0. Work it out. 2b equals 7, divide by 2. So I get b is 7 halves. Or remember I said, what's the opposite of add or minus 7? Plus 7. What's the opposite? Multiply by 2. Divide by 2. And then the other one's a lot easier. And it's just going to be b is negative 7. So there are the solutions to those. And that's by factoring.
All right. Now, five and six talk about finding the discriminant. Okay. So again, with the discriminant, we got to have standard form. So we got to be ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So in this particular case, I need to add eight. So if I do that, I get v squared plus 4v plus 4 equals 0. Now I identify my values. So here, a is 1 right there. b is 4 right here. And then c, I'm going to erase these 8s here, get that out of the way. So now right here, c is 4. Then I just plug in to the discriminant. Now the discriminant is the b squared minus 4ac. So I do 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is also 4. If I do that, I get 0. Well, if I get 0, that means it has one real root. One real root. And remember, we call that a double root. So I come over here to number 6. Again, standard form. So in this case, i got to move the 10x over. So that gives me 6x squared plus 10x plus what? What's my c? Well, there is no number here, so we put 0 in place of the c. Now you got to do that because you got to know the value. So here a is 6, b is 10, and c is 0. So again... I'm just going to use the formula. So b squared minus 4a times c is 0. So since all that's 0, that's just going to go away, and I get 100. Well, whenever you get a positive answer, that means there are two real roots. So now all we're going to do is we're going to take that same similar concept here, and we're going to apply it to actually using the quadratic formula itself. So, again, got to do the same thing. Got to get everything equal to zero. So we move that over. So we get 2k squared minus 8k minus 21 equals zero. Identify your values. Here, a is 2, b is negative 8, and c is negative 21. So the quadratic formula is, and remember the song, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Let this over just a bit so you can see it. And then continue the song all over 2 and then a. So now it's just a matter of simplifying. So now we come in, we get x is 8 plus or minus... Now we deal with the discriminant. So again, just type this in on your calculator and you'll get 232. So I know it has two real answers all over four. Now it's a matter of breaking down the square root. So eight plus or minus. So I gotta think of a square that's a factor of 232. Since it's an even, I always start with uh, four because four is a square and that's four times 58. Square root of 4 then is 2, so 2 comes out. So I get 8 plus or minus 2, square root of 58 over 4. Then I try 58. Well, 58 is 2 times 29. So if I do 58, that's 2 times 29. Well, neither one of these are squares, so that won't break down anymore. Then I have to try to simplify. Since all of these are even numbers, what will go into them? 2. 2 goes into 4, 2. 2 goes into 2, 1. 2 goes into 8, 4. So I end up with 4 plus or minus square root of 58 all over 2. And that's using the quadratic formula. All right, next, find the value of C that completes the square. So in this one, remember what we did? We did half, so we took the middle term with its sign, divided it by 2, and we said if you get a fraction, leave it a fraction, so positive 13, sorry, over 2, and then we square that, 
Again, leave it as a fraction. When you square that, you get 169 over 4, and that is our C. So that's the value to complete the square. Now, how do you solve by completing the square? Very similar. Remember, in this case, we don't want it equal to 0. So we move our number over. So in that case, that's negative 77. And then we need plus something plus something, what we just did right back up here. So I have to figure that out. So how do I do that? I do the same steps that I just did right up here. So I'm going to take positive 20, divide by 2. That gives me positive 10. Square that, and that's 100. So that's what goes here, 100. But it also goes right here, 100. Then we have to factor this. Well, that factors real easily. Remember, it's going to be A, and then all we do is take what we got right there, plus 10 squared equals, Then I have to combine those. That's going to give me 23. Since this is an isolated square, now I take the square root. I get A plus 10 equals. Remember, when we take the square root, we always get a positive negative. Then all I have to do is subtract 10 from both sides. And I end up with A is negative 10 plus or minus square root of 23.